It sounds good. Many religions, they're all against one another, but if you say all religions are equal, you give all of them an equal chance. You can respect all of them. Everybody can find tolerance. So it's a very, very attractive idea. But the idea is founded on another idea, that all religion comes from man. Which idea is that man is God? Which idea man replaces God? And the idea is developed for one reason, to destroy the church that God established, to destroy the church that Christ invented, that he started. And so that is why Pope Leo XIII said it is the worst day of our day. The, or, the priests up in the Vatican II, the great missionary priests like St. Maximilian Kolbe, they understood that the great enemy, the great enemy of the Catholic Church today is Freemasonry. And Freemasonry said it. We must, uh, the great Freemasons at the time of the French Revolution said, we have to crush the head of that infamous woman. We must crush her head. These are the words of Voltaire. Il faut écraser la, la, la infâme. That means that we must crush the head of the woman. And that woman, he meant the church. And they would try to, and in one of the poems of the Freemasons of the time of the French Revolution said, uh, a poem in French, but it said, we're going to strangle the last king with the entrails of the last priest. It's a horrible reference to satanic murder when they murder the person and stuff his entrails in his mouth. But the last king and the last priest, the last king, authority on earth, the fatherhood, the governor, the king who has authority from God, and the priest, the spiritual authority. So Freemasonry is attacking this authority. Now, uh, it's a great enemy, and the, and the great priest understood this. But when Maximin Colby was a seminarian, he was only a seminarian, 1917, he was ordained in 1918, he had tuberculosis, he was in the hospital in Rome. And the Freemasons came into Rome with one million people. And they made a procession to the Vatican. And they were protesting, one million of them, in front of the Rome. And they had a giant banner of Lucifer on top and Michael down below. And they were casting them out. And they were saying, Lucifer will cast out Michael and the Pope will be the servant of the, of the Antichrist. That's what they said. You know very well, perhaps, that in 1869, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere in that time, Pope, Pope Pius IX captured the documents of the Alta Vendita. And these documents of the Alta Vendita, a very, very high-ranking Freemasonic uh, uh, circle in Italy, gave the plan that we are going to infiltrate Catholic seminaries, as many to get our young men into the Catholic seminaries. After that, get them into the bishops. After that, get them with the Pope. So we have a Pope in the Catholic Church who will not condemn our ideas. We do not expect, they say in the document, that we get a Pope who's going to be a Freemason. We don't want that. We just want to have a Pope who will not condemn our ideas. This battle will take a hundred years. But that doesn't matter. The soldier goes on, he dies, and he's replaced by another soldier. It is a long war. This document was published by the official Vatican public house under the orders of Pius IX. He unmasked Freemasonry, his plan. So the priest all knew that. And so when they, he saw this big army, he wasn't angry like I would be. He was, we must convert them. His idea was, we must convert the most radical and the most vicious and the most hardened enemies of the church. And that's why he developed the idea of the Milici Maculate. Now when he built the, the idea of the Milici Maculate, I think we will often be surprised at what this army consists in on its, let's say, its constituency. Uh, what is it that is required? If you go into the Marine Corps, you need to be able to do 50 push-ups in one minute, 50 sit-ups in one minute, run so many miles in 20 minutes. A lot of people can't do that. If you're going to be a Navy SEAL or a, a Ranger, it's even only and very, very, very difficult. The average person is supposed to be able to fit into the Army. But the MI is even easier. The average Catholic who can do some very simple four things can belong to the MI. And I'll talk about that later, but why? 
Why something so simple? The reason is you have to have a, a lot of people in. A lot of people in an army. The more people, you mean to have numbers, just mass numbers, you can't take a handful of Navy SEALs and take over a country. They're very special. Maybe they'll take out Osama bin Laden or do something, blow up a submarine. They're never special forces. They can't do a big job. For a big job, you need a big army. And everybody in the army doesn't have to be an expert. They just have to be there. They have to have weight. You know? And that's the idea. This MI is meant to gather a gigantic force of Catholics who are going to create a critical weight. This idea is illustrated what happened once in, in New York City. In New York City, a priest was preaching, I believe, in the church of St. Agnes. And in the, in the audience that he was preaching was a man named John Haverty. He's the man that founded the Blue Army. Great, he, pre he wrote books on the scapular, a great Marian devotee. Uh, and uh, John was there, and the priest, uh, Father Kogan, I think his name was, he's preaching. And uh, at that time, America was very anti communist, so, you know. And the pri priest was into it, and he, joined, he said, He says, Russia will convert. Russia will convert the day that there is one member of the Blue Army for every member of the Red Army. And of course, there was no Blue Army. But he was, he was saying that there's one member of the Blue Army, everybody knows blue is Mary's color, one member of the Blue Army before Russia will convert. It means that there has to be foot soldiers in this world. Russia is not going to convert until there are as many Catholics praying for his conversion as there are communists spreading communism. That was the idea. He said, I'm going to make the Blue Army. And he did the Blue Army grew like crazy in the 1960s. <laughs> After Vatican II, everything disappeared. The Blue Army trained, tra uh, church, uh, became the world apostolate of prayer. Everything after Vatican II lost the military sense. The Eucharistic Crusade, I used to run the Eucharistic Crusade all the time, that became a children's group for the betterment of the personality development of the child. No longer a crusade. Conquer the Holy Land, save souls, and so on. The Blue Army became the world apostle of prayer. The Militia Immaculate became a prayer group also. In the, in, in, in the modern church, the Militia Immaculate prayer is this. O Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us every course to thee, and for all those who do not have a course to thee, especially uh, the enemies of the church. It doesn't say, but in the old prayer, O Mary, conceive thou sin, pray for us every course to thee, and for all those who do not have a course to thee, especially the Freemasons, and all those who are committed to thee. You may say, that's not a big change. Uh, it's very specific, however. And if you say Freemasons, I see young people here. Uh, some of the people say, what's a Freemason? He looks it up. Google it. And then he's going to end up finding church documents against them. He's going to read that, and he's going to find Catholic social doctrine. And then he's going to read, read about the reign, the social reign of Christ the King. And he is in the middle of Catholic teaching. By one word, because the Freemasons are opposed to that. So you see, you change one little thing. Sometimes that specific change makes a big difference. That specific chain makes a big difference. And so the idea of the army, it has to be big. The Blue Army was quite demanding in comparison to the Militia Maculate. The Blue Army, you had to wear the scapular as a sign of consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Number two, you said the five decades of the Rosary every day, because Our Lady asked for that at Fatima. And number three, you did a sacrifice some sacrifice every day to fulfill your duty of state. In other words, John Haffer just took the message of Our Lady Fatima and turned it into a program, a practical program, to get a lot of people. And I don't remember now, but I think it's something like 30 million members throughout the world. Uh, and that's the number that comes to head, but maybe I'm thinking of the Eucharist Crusade. But it was a really, really big number of people by the time 1960 comes. There's a gigantic, a lot of people in the Blue Army. France, all of Europe, Asia, everywhere, there's a Blue Army. The MI had a similar concept, something easy. 
they must be a gigantic army. So there are only four simple obligations anyone could do. So we'll talk about those. Uh, and I'll just mention them right now just to just show you the idea that they're easy. And then we'll go into the details. The first obligation is to consecrate myself to the Blessed Virgin Mary, to become her instrument. This is the essence. To consecrate myself to her. It's the condition of all things. To consecrate myself to her, to become her instrument for the purpose of the Imam. Secondly, to wear the miraculous medal as a sign of this consecration. Thirdly, to say the MI prayer once a day. The prayer is about 10 seconds in English, it takes 10 seconds. Uh, probably nine seconds in English, if you say it slow 10 seconds. I guarantee you that in Indonesian it takes 10 and a half seconds or 11. Right? Probably 11 seconds. It's even better. 11 seconds. And Messiah, same story. 10 and a half seconds, 11 seconds. Um, the prayer. O oh, Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us every course to thee. This is the prayer which surrounds the miraculous medal. The prayer given by the Blessed Virgin Mary to St. Catherine Labore. And then St. Maximi Colby added, and all those who do not have recourse to thee, especially the Freemasons and all those committed to thy care. So then the second thing. The first aspect of this prayer is going towards Our Lady. The second aspect of this prayer is turned towards the whole world that does not have recourse to her. That's everybody. That's everybody that's not Catholic. Who don't, I mean, even Catholics who don't understand. All those who do not have recourse to thee, especially the Freemasons. How many times have why what was that Freemason thing? Well, that's an opportunity to explain what it means. But especially the Freemasons and all those who are committed to you, which is your apostolate, the people that you are praying for, the people that the MI is laying at her feet, all of those who are committed to thee. To say that prayer once a day, 11 seconds. That prayer. That's where the power of the MI is, you see. That if you, if we have, if we have six people say that prayer, that's one minute per day, right? If we have 60 people saying that prayer, that's one hour per day. If we have 306, that's, that's uh, one minute, we have, if we have 360, we're going up to 10 hours. Or well, maybe no, 600 minutes going to 10 hours. You see, it just multiplies. If we get a lot of people, 360 would require one hour. 360 people would give us one hour of prayer. 3,600, that's gonna give us 10 hours of prayer. For you, it's only 10 seconds. But when you get 3,000 people doing it, what's, what is 10 hours of prayer in her answer?